So like I said, my sermon today is titled, Deal with the Devil. Don't you love that picture? Listen, God wants us to put our trust in Him. I mean, that is what life is for every Christian, isn't it? Learning how to trust God and how to give Him control of our lives. Every piece of our lives. We learn that every day. We learn how to do that more and more and more. And in fact, God is constantly pointing out to us areas of our lives that don't belong to Him. And He says, look, I want this. You know this little thing that you do? You know how you get angry when people say stuff that you don't like? That's not in my control. I want to control that, not you. And then he waits for us to say, okay, God, you can have it. Most of the time we do this. Give me that back. I don't want you to control that. I want to be in control of that. I want to control my anger. I can do it. But we can't, can we? And the devil knows that, and he knows how to get that anger working, get our emotions all riled up. And that's why God says, okay, I'll wait. And when you're ready, when you realize you can't do it on your own, I'll be here. You give me control, and this won't be a problem for you anymore. And once we finally get to that point and we say, okay, God, I'm done. I I, I don't want to try to control my anger anymore. It's yours or whatever your problem might be. God says, great. Now, I was just noticing this little thing over here. These little lies that you tell. I'm not in control of that. I want control. And what do we do? Give me that back. And God says, okay, I'll wait. And this is what life is for Christians. These little things that God points out to us. He says, I want this. I want control because this is hurting you. Give me control so I can protect you. And that is what we're focused on this entire year. Trusting God. No matter what's going on. No matter what news you might receive. You can trust God. So here's our motto for this year, if you want to call it that. Don't let the news persuade you. Just trust God. Can I get a big amen on that one? All right, I love it. You know, Christians have no reason to fear anything in this world. Like this scripture says, we can confidently trust the Lord to care for us. And that's our scripture for this year. They do not fear bad news. They confidently trust the Lord to care for them. Don't you want to be one of those people he's talking about here? We can confidently trust God to take care of us in any and every situation. And so we have been learning how to do that. And as long as you are living the way God told you to, you have nothing to fear in this world or the next one because God's got you through all of eternity if you let him. So we've been studying Psalm 46 this year, a verse at a time, just to learn who this God is that wants control and why we should trust him. I think we've learned a lot so far. How about you? You've been here. You've learned a lot. We're now on verse 5, Psalm 46, 5. It goes like this. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From, ever, from the very break of day, God will protect it. What is he talking about? Well, this is a promise that God will not allow the place that he lives, his city, 
to ever be destroyed. Where does God live? Well, Jesus said, if you will obey me, my Father and I will come and live in you. Which means that makes you God's city. What a comforting promise we have here. Because he promised that the city where he lives cannot be destroyed. That he will protect it. He protects the place that he calls home. If he calls your life home, he will protect you. And if he lives in you, you can trust he is protecting you. But, uh uh-oh, pastor's always got that but, doesn't he? Well, it's actually the Bible. Here's what the Bible says. Look at this in Deuteronomy. 23.14 The camp, that is where God lives, must be holy. For the Lord your God moves around in your camp to protect you and to defeat your enemies. He must not see any shameful thing among you or he will turn away from you. See, this is where the devil comes in. See, when you repent of your sins and you accept God's free gift of eternal life, God at that moment washes you clean, you are pure and holy in His sight. You don't have a sin in you. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad that God has grace to cover over, to eliminate all of my sins. That's what Jesus died on the cross for. To kill off those sins and send them to hell where they belong. And since they're no longer a part of me, I don't have to go to hell. But, did you see what it says here? He can't see any shameful thing in you, or he'll turn away from you. See, it's your responsibility, once God makes you holy, to keep your life holy. And don't be fooled, it's a battle. The devil is fighting hard to make sure you don't keep your life holy. It is a battlefield that you may not have even known existed. You are in a spiritual war that has been going on since the beginning of the world. Look at this. Revelation 12, 17 tells us a little bit about it. Then the furious dragon set out to attack all who were keeping God's commandments and confessing that they belong to Jesus. The dragon represents the enemy of all Christians and the enemy of God, the devil, Satan. See, Satan hates God, and he will do anything he can to hurt God, including destroying the people God loves. That's you and me. If he can. And so he tries to find ways to destroy your life. He tries to find ways to demolish you. It is Satan that is responsible for all those temptations to sin that we deal with daily because he wants to destroy us. Listen to what Jesus said, John 10.10. He said, the thief, that's the devil, comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy Jesus said, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in a 
abundance to the full till it overflows. That's what God wants for us. Abundant life, which is the reason we named our church that. As long as we live in this world, though, we will have to deal with the devil trying to destroy us. So, we better learn how to fight. Amen? Today, I want to give you a quick and easy to remember lesson on how to deal with the devil and make sure you are keeping your camp holy so that God will not turn away from you and so that he will be able to protect you and defeat your enemies like we heard in Deuteronomy. So we started today talking about how to make sure God is able to protect you from evil that wants to destroy you, right? That's where we're at. Well, the truth is the devil is the one that is responsible for all evil that exists. Think about how bad you have to be to be responsible for all evil that exists. Wow! If it weren't for the devil, there would be no sin. But also, there would be no death. There would be no illness, no pain. The devil is responsible for all of that. Satan will do whatever it takes to keep God out of your life and unable to protect you. It's Satan who makes lies sound so appropriate. Oh no, I I really need to tell that lie so I don't hurt their feelings. Or I don't get in trouble. He makes it sound so appropriate. Like, this, it just makes sense. I should lie. Or it is, it is he who makes cheating sound so fulfilling. Or it's he that makes gossip sound so delicious. It's he who makes harmful substances like drugs or alcohol seem like they're going to satisfy you. He twists and he turns everything around until he fools us into justifying our disobedience to God. He makes everything bad look so good. Look at 2 Corinthians 11.14. Well, no wonder. Even Satan can disguise himself to look like an angel of light. Satan can make sin look so appealing that you will think it's okay to do it just this once. Or it's okay as as long as you don't, you know, I don't take it too far. I I can stop. I can handle it. And if you aren't on your guard, he can fool you into believing God doesn't care about those little sins. He only cares about the big ones. And of course, all my sins are little. Right? Sound familiar? Satan will do his best to convince you that he is on your side. He's here looking out for you. He's going to give you the stuff you want. And he can be very convincing. If he can't get you to believe in what he has to offer, he'll try a different tactic. Like trying to convince you, you're too strong for him. 
Oh, he couldn't possibly have any influence in your life. You're too smart to fall for his tricks. You ever tried that with you? Listen, don't buy it. Understand this. Satan will never give up trying to get you to disobey God because he wants to make sure your life is not a holy place where God can live. That is his whole plan, my friend. So he will never, ever stop tempting you to sin because you are the only one who is able to stop God from protecting you. See, God wants to protect you. God wants you to be safe in this life and all the way through to eternity. He sent his son to die just for that reason. And the devil is not strong enough to kick God out of your life. The devil cannot defeat God. But you are strong enough to kick God out of your life. Because God gave you free will. And you can say, God, I don't want you in control of this part of my life. And what happens? Well, this is a really interesting scripture that I found when I was studying this. Jesus is talking here. Matthew 12. Do we have it up on screen? There it is. Matthew 12, 29. Jesus said, how do you suppose anyone could get into a strong man's house and steal his property unless he first tied up the strong man. But if he did that, he could ransack his whole house. You see, Jesus was talking here to the Pharisees about his power over demons, but the same thing is true of our power over God's ability to protect us. If Satan can get us to bind God's hands, so to speak, to tie God up and take away his power in our lives, by making us unholy due to sin, then he can come in and ransack our entire lives. And that's what he does. This is what Satan is all about. I'm giving you some good truths here today. He will lie and he will tempt you with everything he can to get you to sin So that you give up God's territory, your heart, to the devil. He'll tempt you to do things that God can't live with. Because as soon as you give up that territory to the devil, you take it away from God. And you take away God's power in that area of your life. And you take away or you push aside or you tie up the strong man. In that area of your life. And God can no longer protect you there. And what do you think the devil's going to do if God isn't able to protect you? Why do you think God, uh, I mean the devil uses drugs and alcohol? Because if he can get you to say, well, it's okay to feel good. God doesn't mind that. And you give over that part of your life to the devil. Many of you can attest to this. He doesn't stop. He keeps taking more and more and more, doesn't he? Because he got you to tie up the strong man. He got you... To take God's power to protect you away. 
See, there will never be a time when you don't have to beware of the devil's tactics. You will never get to the place of spiritual maturity where you can say, devil can't touch me now. In fact, here's what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Don't be so naive and self-confident. You're not exempt. You could fall flat on your face as easily as anyone else. This is why we need to know how to fight. Satan is not out to show you a good time. Do you understand this? Oh, he's going to tell you he wants to give you a good time. He's going to tell you he wants to make you feel good. His temptations may look pleasant on the outside, but believe me, he does not want you to be happy. He isn't looking out for your best interests. Please understand, the devil's unending goal is to end you. He wants to destroy you. And if God is not in control, He can. 1 Peter 5.8 gives us a warning. Be careful. Watch out for attacks from Satan, your great enemy. He prowls around like a hungry, roaring lion looking for some victim to tear apart. Don't be fooled. Okay, have we established yet that Satan is a bad guy? That all of the things he tries to tempt you with are bad, evil. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, why is the pastor talking about the devil today? He never does that. For those of you that don't hear me often, I don't talk about the devil a lot. I'm not the kind of preacher who tries to scare people into heaven. I have learned that even though there's a lot to fear in evil, that fear is not a strong enough motivator to save anybody. Fear will not last. If I made you so afraid that you gave your heart to God today, within a few days that fear would be gone and you got nothing else motivating you to give your life to God. So I don't talk about this stuff much, but it is very important that we understand who the devil really is and what these temptations to sin are all about. So why am I talking about Satan today? Well, here's the thing. As we mature, as we grow spiritually as Christians, and we become more like what God has called us to be, listen close. As you grow as a Christian, as you give more of your life to God, as you start doing more things for God, you become a bigger threat to Satan. And he is not just going to sit back and allow it. You see, the more serious you get about serving God and His kingdom and His church, the more of a threat you become to Satan. Because the more you grow the more you become like Jesus. And the more you influence people around you for God. And the more you mess up Satan's plan to take as many people to hell with him as he can. Because that is his plan. And he is trying hard to take as many people as he can. He knows his end is hell. He knows it. He knows the Bible. And he knows the Bible says that's what's going to happen. 
So his plan is to hurt God as much as he can by taking as many of the people God loves down to hell as he can. See, Satan knows God doesn't need smart, intelligent, rich, strong people to do his work. God can use anyone who is willing. And that scares the devil. Because it's those people who get serious about living holy lives that Satan sends his armies after. And that's why it is so important for us to talk about Satan today. See, we have people making commitments to serve God wholeheartedly every week here. On Sunday mornings, on Sunday nights, on Tuesday nights in our prayer group, on Wednesday nights in our Bible study, we have people who are making commitments every week, saying, I'm going to serve God with everything I got. I'm giving Him control. I'm going to trust Him. And if you're one of those people who are getting more serious about living for God than you've ever been, you may have already noticed life has gotten more uncomfortable for you, that you're getting tempted more than you ever have before to sin. You're getting tested more. There's more problems in life, and things aren't as smooth as they were before you made that commitment to live for God. You may have noticed that relationships have gone sour, or you're suddenly plagued with problems you never had before. I'm here to tell you that is the way the devil works. He doesn't want you giving your life to God. He is trying to get you to give up on God and to give your life back to his control. And that's why I'm talking about this today, because I see people out there who are struggling, who are having these tests and these trials right after they commit their lives to God. You need to understand what's going on, my friend. This is how it works. So, how do we deal with the devil? Well, you don't make a deal with the devil, I'll tell you that. How do we deal with him? If you're following along in the handout that came in your bulletin or on the app on your phone, here's your first fill in the blank for today. Number one, trust God. How do you deal with the devil? Here's your first and biggest priority. Trust God. Don't trust yourself. Don't trust the devil. Trust God. I know, you're probably saying, I I hear that all the time, especially at this church. We talk about it every Sunday here. In fact, this is our focus for this year, isn't it? To trust God. Don't let the news persuade you. It says over the doors in the foyer as you walk out, just trust God. Well, trusting God never becomes more important than when we're talking about how to deal with the devil. In Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2, those who go to God Most High for safety will be protected by the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, you are my place of safety and protection. You are my God, and I trust you. It isn't your strength that makes you a threat to Satan. If you are having a problem falling to temptation to sin over and over, you need to understand this. It's not your strength. If you're trying to stop sinning in your own strength, you're going to lose every time. You've got to give it to God. You've got to trust Him to protect you from those temptations to sin. Stop trying to do it in your own strength. 
It's God's strength in you that gets the devil trembling. You shake your fist at the devil and say, I'm not going to let you in here again. He's just laughing at you. He takes that as a challenge. See, that's why Satan wants you to sin. If he can get you to sin, if he can get you to stop trusting God to give you everything you need, and he can get you instead to turn to him to sin for the things that you want that you don't have, he gains power over you. Because why do we sin? We sin because the devil offers us something we don't have. And we say, I need that. And God's not giving it to me. So I'm going to take it from the devil. That's not trusting God, my friend. That's saying, God, I don't trust you to give me what I need. i got to go get it somewhere else. Whether that is a good feeling or it's more money than I have, so i got to go steal some. I, I've heard so many justifications to sin. The devil is so good at convincing us. I've heard Christians say, well, I had to go shoplift that stuff because I needed it at home. What they're actually saying is, I need something God isn't giving me. I don't trust Him to give it to me. i got to go get it myself. That's not trusting God, is it? Or those people who say, I need to feel good. i got to stop feeling bad. And you know, the drugs, they, they really make me feel good. God's not making me feel good, so i got to go figure out how to do that myself. And you're not trusting God. Let me tell you something. You want to deal with the devil, that's where you start. Trust God. You don't have something you think you need? Get on your knees and talk to your Father in heaven. Stop getting it yourself. Stop thinking God's not going to give you what you need. If the devil can get you to stop trusting God, to give you everything you need and instead turn to sin for those things that you want, that you think you need, that you don't have, he gains power over you. Can you see why the devil fights so hard to get you to sin? He knows that sin will take over your life and get you to stop trusting God for anything. And as sin takes over, Satan gets more and more control in your life and God gets less and less control. And that means he has less power to protect you from the devil. Amen. From evil. And that's why you need to make sure you are always under God's protection. As Isaiah 26.3 tells us, you, you will keep, this is talking to God, you will keep in perfect and constant peace the one whose mind is steadfast, that is committed and focused on you, God, in both inclination and character because... He trusts and takes refuge in you, God, with hope and confident expectation. That is, that God will fulfill every need that you have. I mean, doesn't that just sound wonderful? Perfect and constant peace. Isn't that what we want? That is the promise for everyone who trusts in God completely and not in themselves. Trusting in God means living the way He says you should, even 
if you think you have a better way. God says, thou shalt not steal. It's one of the big ten. Ten commandments. Don't think you have a better idea, you're going to go take it from the store, from the Walgreens, or the Walmart. Trust God to provide you with what you need, and He will keep you in perfect and constant peace. Let's make this a focus of our prayers this week. Monday and Tuesday in that time that you have set aside for God, which I hope you have done and you do every day, ask God to protect you from Satan's traps as you learn to trust Him completely for everything in your life. Let's move on now to the next thing we need to have in order to deal with the devil. Number two, live pure. We need to be living pure, blameless, holy lives. Oh, wow. I got one amen out of that. <laughs> People are saying, Pastor Dungong, crazy. Blameless, holy lives. Who does he think we are? Jesus? Well, if you have God living in you, you're living a holy life. God made sure you were holy. How do we keep doing that? Well, the answer isn't easy, but it is very simple. How do you live a holy life, blameless and pure? Resist the devil's temptations. See how simple that is? I, I didn't say it was easy. But it is simple. Just don't give in. When the devil tempts you, don't give in. No matter how pleasing or how harmless a sin may look, don't do it. I got people looking at me like, he is nuts. Look at what James says. James 4, 7. Surrender to God. Resist the devil and what? He will run from you. The best way to resist Satan is to already have the attitude, I'm going to remain pure for God. No sin allowed in my life at all. Just have that attitude. Don't allow yourself to commit even the tiniest of sins, no matter how harmless it might seem. One of my favorite Bible commentators, Matthew Henry, wrote this. If we basely yield to temptations, the devil will continually follow us. Let me stop here for a minute. Because I, whenever I talk about not giving in, resisting the devil, and not being uh, falling to those temptations, I always have people who will say, I can't do it. And pastor, you're not telling the truth because I resist the devil and he, and he keeps coming. You said, the Bible says, that he will flee from us if we resist him. Well, here's the problem. As Matthew Henry points out, if we yield to those temptations, the devil will continually follow us. See, you might say, I'm not going to do it this time. But you still have in your heart and in your mind, maybe next time. I'm not quite ready to give that up all the way. I won't do it now. And the devil knows. 
He knows he's been watching you since the day you were born. He knows every button to push that will get you to give in. And that's why he doesn't leave you alone. That's why we have got to have the attitude, I'm going to live pure no matter what. I'm not giving in ever again. Let's get on with Matthew Henry. He said, but if we put on the whole armor of God and we stand it out against him, he will be gone from us. Resolution shuts and bolts the door against temptation. And that, my friends, is the answer. Just resolve, I am not going to sin. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to give in. Before the temptation ever hits you, make a stand and say, I'm going to live a pure life. I'm not giving in anymore, devil. It seems so obvious, but you'd be surprised how many times Satan gets us to do what he wants by convincing us, you know, that little thing doesn't matter. You can do this. It's okay. And because we haven't resolved, I'm going to live a pure life, he gets a foothold in that door that should be bolted and locked, but it's a little crack open. Or, how about this? I can't stop sinning, Pastor. I'm human. See, if you resolve you are going to sin, you're going to sin. You've left that door open. And the devil's like, okay, I like that challenge. Let's see how many sins we can get that person to do. And before you know it, you're committing sins you never thought you ever would. Listen, I was a chaplain out at New Folsom for about three years. I was in yard C, level four and five. These are the the bad of the bad. These are the lifers. And I could tell you many, many stories of people who, who committed heinous Crimes and sins, adultery, rape, molestation, even murder. And every one of them said they never thought they would ever do anything like that. And each person started with a small, seemingly harmless sins they convinced themselves didn't matter. But every sin matters. Even the smallest ones. Because sin doesn't stay small. It never stays small. It grows like cancer. And it takes over your whole life. And the only way to deal with the devil is to completely eliminate sin from your life. Take a stand. Ephesians 4.27 says this. Do not give the devil a way to defeat you. If you resolve, I am not going to sin. I am going to live a pure life for God. God help me. The devil has no way to defeat you. But if you say, I can't stop sinning. You've given the devil a way to defeat you. Chuck Smith, in his magazine, uh, The Word for Today, wrote, One of the biggest problems, however, is that we so often are ignorant of the devil's devices. So many times he engages us in a spiritual battle, and we think it's a problem with our flesh, our human nature. I think the first key in overcoming the attacks of the enemy is to recognize that this is an attack of the enemy. It's not just because you're human. It's the devil. Until you recognize the spiritual nature of the battle, you cannot resist the devil. 
So he gives us three R's. Listen to Chuck Smith here. The three R's are so important in this spiritual conflict. Number one, recognize the enemy. It's not your human nature. It's not your flesh. You can help it. It's the devil who is attacking you. It's Satan. Recognize him. Number two, resist the devil. Once you realize it's him, it's not you, it's the devil, resist him. Number three, rejoice in the victory that Christ has wrought for us. God already found a way to destroy that sin that you are saying you can't stop. Jesus died and took that sin to hell. And when you say, I can't help myself, you're digging that sin out of the grave, pulling it back from hell, that rotting, disgusting corpse, and putting it back on yourself. God's already taken care of it. You just need to decide, I'm done with sin, and give the devil a mandate. Like this. Satan, take notes and listen well. You will not conquer me. You are extremely subtle, but I'm on your ways. You parade as an angel of light, but I walk in a much brighter light. Your days of deception are over with me. I won't be deceived, detoured, derailed, distorted, distracted, discouraged, or disillusioned by your schemes. Your vile influence will not cross the no trespassing sign on the gate of my heart. My life is off limits to you now. My doors are closed to you forever. You won't walk in, crawl in, slither in, sneak in, pry in, jump in, swim in, fly in, drive in, or barge into my life. I now have a permanent guest that lives inside of me. Face it, your days are numbered. Your kingdom is doomed. Your designs are dwindling, your evil eroding, your deceit decaying, your deception diminishing, and your death is dying. Your victory party has been canceled, and soon your show will be over. You can't trap me with your sneers or defeat me with your deception, because he that is in me is greater than you. So get off my property. Come on! Tell the devil, get off my property. He doesn't belong there. He has no power except what you give him in your life. Just determine right now, I'm done with the devil. I'm not sinning anymore. My life belongs to God. I'm not doing those things that displease God. Wednesday and Thursday this week, focus on this. Ask God to protect you from living that impure life where Satan has a way to defeat you. And experience God's protection from sins that will ultimately destroy your life if you keep doing them. All right, last point for today. Quickly, how do we deal with the devil? Number three, gear up. Come on, gear up. It's so important to be dressed in proper attire when you go to war. Can you imagine going to war in shorts and tennis shoes? Come on. You got to dress up, gear up. Make sure you have the proper attire on. Ephesians 6:11 tells us, "Put on all of God's armor so you that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil." God has given us his armor. That is not your armor. That's not something God made for you. This is God's armor. It has His strength. And you know He can defeat the devil. Put it on. With God's armor in place, Satan can't get through your defenses. So do you know what God's armor is? Let's look at it real quick. Ephesians 6, 14-18. This is what God gave us. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. That is, put truth on like a belt. The belt goes in the middle of your body just like truth should be the center of your life. It holds 
everything together. If you don't have truth, nothing else matters. And as a matter of fact, the word truth in the Greek is a very special word. In English, it can be and is often translated as transparent. So your belt becomes a belt of transparency. In other words, you got nothing to hide. That is the truth that should surround your life. Well, you got nothing to hide. You got nothing to be embarrassed about. If somebody could look inside of your mind and see your thoughts, you wouldn't be embarrassed because you got the belt of truth on. And it makes your life transparent. I got nothing to hide. That's what, how God wants you to live. Let's look at the next one. With the breast, nope, back up. With the be- breastplate of righteousness in place. Where does a breastplate go? Right on your chest. It covers your heart. It protects the seat of emotions in your life. What does the devil like to do? He likes to toy with your emotions. He likes to grab those emotions, make you angry, make you sad, make you lonely. You got God's breastplate on, he can't get through. Keep it on. What's the next one? Your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. That is, shoes that make you ready to stand firm, no matter what the ground is like. You ever seen these football players' shoes? They got the spikes on the bottom. Why do they have that? So they can stand firm when somebody is pushing against them in muddy ground. They can stand firm. They won't... Slide back. Back sliding, anybody? They won't slip and fall. Falling to temptation, anyone? You need the right shoes on. Have your feet fitted with the readiness that makes you ready for, the arm, for that battle whenever it comes. Sometimes it sh- surprises us, doesn't it? You're ready if you got the shoes on and they come from the gospel of peace. Your feet... Just exude peace. Everywhere you go, you leave footprints of peace behind you. When you're around people, they say, man, it feels so peaceful when they're here. That's the, the shoes from the armor of God. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Your shield is made out of your faith, your trust in God. The more you trust Him, the bigger your faith, the bigger your shield. And notice it doesn't just block those arrows. It extinguishes the flaming arrows that the devil throws, shoots at you. When he shoots those arrows at you, those arrows that puncture in your mind, make you think thoughts you should not think, Make you feel feelings you should not be feeling. That flame. We need something to extinguish them. That's what the shield of faith does. It extinguishes them. It takes Satan's power away. It puts out that fire, doesn't it? Next one. Uh, Take the helmet of salvation. That helmet covers your head. Protects your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your mind. And since it is God's armor, it is made up of God's Holy Spirit. And the salvation that Jesus bought for us with His life. And every thought you think has got to go through the filter of that helmet of salvation. Being washed pure by Jesus' blood so that you're not thinking bad thoughts. They're purified. You're not seeing bad things. You're not looking at them. You are seeing people as God sees them because you're looking through the filter of Jesus' blood. 
You're not hearing things you shouldn't be hearing, not listening to those gossip and slander. Instead, you are hearing cries for help that God hears. It's being filtered through salvation. And those, it covers your mouth. You ever seen those full face helmets the Roman army used to have? You see the gladiator movies, you notice that they cover their faces. I love the fact that God's helmet covers my mouth. Keeps me from saying things I should not say. It's all filtered out through Jesus' blood, the salvation of our souls. And now we're only saying words of life and truth, words that go from God to the people around us. And then we have the helmet of salvation, excuse me, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Notice that's the only offensive weapon we have. If you want to fight the devil, only offensive weapon you have is the Word of God. Memorize it. Read it. Put it inside of you so that you can use it when the devil comes against you. Just like Jesus did when the devil tempted him in the desert at the beginning of his ministry. All Jesus said to the devil was quoting scripture. There's one more. Let's keep going. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, be alert. And always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Prayer is also a very powerful weapon. Not only for our lives, but to help protect others that we love. Here is your armor that God has given you. It is His armor you are borrowing. Put it on. Make sure you put each piece of God's armor on every day so that you can stand against every attack from Satan. Listen, I believe this armor is more than just a pretty metaphor or a a pretty poem to read. I believe this spiritual armor is very real. And it is given to us by God to fight this war we are fighting against evil. Which I also believe is real, by the way. If we could see into the spirit world, we would see around us, all around, spiritual beings in a war that we are in and we don't even realize it. Friday and Saturday, ask God to help you put on His armor every day and help you keep it on. And use that armor, my friends, to fight the devil. As the worship team comes up, I want to show you one more video. It is a battle cry. Take a look at this. I am not an innocent bystander. bystander. I am a threat threat to my enemy. 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 I am powerful and and cunning. I am strategic strategic and bold. bold. I will not sit idly by. I will take ground. I will advance. I will will tear through through my enemy. enemy. And my enemy will hate me. I will not avoid the difficult fight. I will fight! I will be wounded! I will be targeted and I will bleed! I will not tire! My wounds will be healed! I will see tragedy! I will feel pain! But I will be restored! My feet will not stumble! My hands will hold fast! I will not be intimidated!
will push the limits! I will push the limits! I scale the mountains! I scale the mountains! My enemy will cower! My enemy will cower! For I serve a great king! We are victorious, yes. my friends. Jesus already won the war. Thank you, Jesus. He killed those sins. We don't have to do them anymore. They do not have power over us. If you feel like you just get defeated over and over by sin, understand God needs to be the one in control of your life and he will protect you but he will never force you to let him be in control he will never take control from you you have to give it to him you have to say god i want you in control i'm not doing anything that displeases you from this moment on and when you stumble, and when you fall, and when the devil gets the best of you, which he does, as soon as you realize it, as soon as you understand you have given the devil part of that control and you've taken it away from God, repent. Repent. Tell God you're sorry, but don't stop there. Give control back to him. Resolve, I'm not going to do that again. God, give me the strength to stand firm. Help me to put on your armor so I am protected. Protect your holy city, the place where you live, my heart, my life, and he will do it. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we need you. We need your strength. And God, the thing is, I know that's what you want. You want every one of us to be giving you complete control of our lives so that you can protect us. But God, we get fooled so easily. The devil is so good at convincing us that we have to sin, that we need that thing that he's tempting us with. That we can't trust you completely for everything. God, help us to realize it's a lie. That he's trying to gain control of our lives and, and take it away from you. He's trying to get us to tie up the strong man so that he can plunder the whole house. God, help us not to give in even to the tidiest of sins. Help us not to fall to any temptation. To put on your armor and to keep it on. To get put it on and make sure it's on every single day. So that, God, you can control our lives, our destinies, and you can protect us from everything that the devil wants to do, which is steal, kill, and destroy. And thank you, God, that you are willing to put up and be patient with me. All the mistakes that I make, all the times that I stumble and fall, every time that I give in to that temptation because I'm really not trusting you. Thank you for being there to forgive me every single time. But God, help me to have to ask you for forgiveness less and less. Help me to stand up to temptation more and more, to resist the devil and make him flee. Thank you, God, for all of these people that are here listening to this message, for all of these people that you purposed to hear this message today. I pray we would take it to heart and no longer allow the devil to have anything to do with our lives. Help us to just make that resolution today. In Jesus' name, amen.